midterm, what's going to be the offensive plan and the quarterback plan getting through the rest of the year? And then bigger picture, broader picture stuff about the offense as well. Like, you could attack this from any and all angle and and talk till the cows come home about it. So, let's start here first with Alabama losing and Notre Dame winning. Notre Dame now has the longest win streak in the country against unranked teams at 36 games. This is to be applauded and is a sign of the general stability and basement of the program. That is a big deal. Also, by the way, even though we're not playing them, it still felt good to have a situation where Notre Dame wins on a Saturday and Alabama loses. How many times can we say that? We got to go back a bunch of years, I feel like. So that is to be applauded. At least we're not losing to absolute nobodies that aren't even ranked and everything falls apart. I think we are to the point where the raw talent in the program won't allow for that. And that is a good sign. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying that everything's great. I'm just saying at least that isn't an issue how it was in some previous Kelly years. Okay? So, total credit to the team for overcoming many challenges to win this game. They overcame the loud environment and the crowd. They overcame the ACC refs. They overcame injuries. They overcame some bad plays on both sides of the ball. You know what else they overcame to win this game? The coaching staff on the offensive side of the ball. They even overcame and won despite their own staff. We'll get to that. We'll get to it. But this was a huge win. You had to have it. You needed to stop the bleeding from Cincinnati week. And you just needed to find any way to limp into this bye with only the one loss. They did that. It wasn't pretty. I have a lot of questions about how we got here and where we're going. But the main goal was met. Stop the hemorrhaging. Limp into the bye. Get healthier. And hopefully come up with some sort of plan for an offense over the next half a month before you play USC. Gritty, tough, hard-fought win by Notre Dame. Credit to the players for never quitting. Total credit is due. They could have hung their heads. We're down 10 nothing. Pack it in. This ain't our year. And take your loss and go into the bye and we're all crying. They didn't do that. Major credit to them. I made a big deal about saying this was going to test the, this game was going to test the resiliency of the Notre Dame program. Those players fought through it, never gave up, kept fighting, came back, came back, did enough to win. Was it pretty? No. Is it polished? No. Are we a playoff quality team right now? Absolutely not. Nobody watching could say we are. So it all depends on how you're looking at this and which lens. If you're asking me about the bigger, broader Notre Dame program lens, I'm still saying this isn't good enough for middle of year 12. And I believe that. And don't say, oh, you're just being hard on it. No, that's a compliment. That is a compliment to what they've accomplished the last handful of years that I don't think what we're seeing right now is good enough. That is a compliment, okay, to the program. So in that big scale picture, yeah, you can't be where we are right now, and I'm not happy about it, and I refuse to accept it. In a smaller scale picture of just surviving last Saturday night, great job. It's the best they could do. Those bigger picture issues I'm worried about can't be fixed in a week between Cincinnati and now. The, the questions of why we're not in full reload and we're in rebuild in a lot of areas of this team. That all couldn't be fixed between Cincinnati and this game. You just had to win it, and they did. And they did. 
It's so much easier to complain and talk about stuff that went wrong in a win. So good job to the players. They didn't give in. They kept fighting, got the win. That is a great, great thing, okay? Get healthy in this buy, and for God's sake, figure out what you're going to do on offense. Figure something out, okay? So the fight to the end and finding a way to win is a big deal. You only get 12 of these. Each of them matters immensely. Terrific individual efforts and collective efforts. Limp into the buy, get healthy, try and learn to fly. That's the plan. So for Saturday night, way to overcome your own offensive staff and find a way to win the game. That's really impressive by the players. Good job. Let's get into this and break some of it down. This, especially offensively, how I describe it is like many of my past relationship statuses. It's complicated. There is a lot to dissect, but we need to have a talk, okay? So I, I just need to talk this out, and you tell me if it makes sense or if you're reading something or that I'm missing. We, we got to talk this out. So Brian Kelly named Cone the starter, mentioning a veteran presence and experience in a tough environment as the reason. Fine. Like, I get it. Fine. Let, let's say you don't argue about that. I get it. Okay. Entering the game, knowing it was going to be Cone, I was picturing me, Mr. Glass Half Empty. I was picturing the Cone offense that I suspected BK and Reese would set up to start the game. I figured they'd try the same lame, weak, predictable stuff that already is proven this year would not work with Cone, and I figured we'd look really bad. Early downs, try and run it into a wall for nothing, lose yards, then you're in a third down pass situation. I figured we'd have at least one false start or a motion penalty, throw a sack in there, a tackle for a loss. That's what I was envisioning because that's what I've seen the opening series look like under Cone so far. I was hoping that this wouldn't be the case and that they would adapt the plan if it was Cone. Sure enough, though, the game starts and it's literally exactly what I thought and knew would happen. The offensive plan almost looked like borderline sabotage. That's how bad the plan was. It started out exactly how you would plan an offense that you wanted to look awful and not move the ball. Okay? If you wanted to go with Cone for the experience in that environment, fine, but not with the game plan that is already proven doesn't work with Cone running it. Instead, that's exactly what we got and dug ourselves a hole. It, it, I can't understand it. I, I just don't get it. That whole first few series opening drive stuff, no. You can't run it that way if you're going with Cone. Exactly what we saw was my greatest fear. It's going to be Cone. It's going to be lame. The plan will have no balls. It'll be predictable to all of us and to Virginia Tech. And it was. And we got the results we knew we would get. Because everybody knows what's coming. So it was easy to defend. Okay? So... In many ways, these players won in spite of that staff who is still grasping at straws to find any sort of identity halfway through year a dozen. The first couple drives had it all. 
predictable, boring play calls, penalties, sacks, busted plays. It was exactly what I feared. The staff opted for a known, even though it was a bad known, instead of going with the unknown, meaning one of the other quarterbacks, build them a package, whatever. Or this doesn't even mean you had to go to one of the other younger guys. It could just be you adjust what plays you're running so Cone can excel. We did not do that. We did not do that. So again, if you're going to go with Cone, I'll grumble but be like, okay, I kind of get it. But it can't be a repeat of the same style of offense that doesn't work with Cone. Stop doing it. It's scared coaching, and I hate it. So, you run in a lame, predictable game plan everybody knows isn't going to work, and you magically think for some reason on the road at night against kind of a decent defense, you randomly think it's all going to just click and go great. It doesn't. It goes terribly, okay? Goes horribly. Then Buckner comes in. You can easily see his raw talent. The team gets a boost from him and they move the ball. Yes, he makes mistakes. Some of them of an egregious nature. A pick six from a true freshman. I view totally differently than Jack Cohn's interception in the first drive against Cincinnati in the red zone. They are both interceptions, but vastly different scenarios. When I'm dealing with a true freshman, I expect some of those mistakes as a developmental course. And I tell myself, I'm dealing with the bad stuff now. So in two, three, four years, Buckner's going to be awesome. He's going to have all this figured out. That at least is working towards a brighter future. When Jack Cohn makes that kind of mistake, there is no future. You're here to win now. There is no development. There's no next year. There's no none of that. Win now or you can't be the quarterback. That's it. That's the bottom line with Cohn. It's black and white. There's no future, no development. Win now or don't play. Period. Okay? If you're going to have silly, dumb mistakes, I'd rather be from the freshman. At least there's a future that's going to be brighter. Okay? So, then you start to go with Buckner. Things kind of go well. He starts off hot. The team comes to life. We move the ball, put up some points. You're sitting there and you're starting to think, maybe Buckner is the plan after all. Then he gets hurt on a non-contact thing, by the way. That little just little skip at little skip jump after getting rid of the ball lands weird tweaks the ankle. Back comes in cone after a benching and then lights up the field and wins the game. What a wild wave of quarterback emotions. Here are some of my main thoughts about this exact dynamic. Jack Cohn can help this team and has done so in some very, very clutch drives. And he's made some clutch throws when we needed it. But he also looks really bad and terrible in spots. And it's not all his fault. We've dis- we've discussed the offensive line and all that. Here's what I've learned. Just with my eyes. I- I'm not an X's and O's expert. I'm not a coach. The up-tempo end of halves and the end of games where things are sped up a little bit, spread out, quick throws, open things up. It's a little quicker pace, a little better rhythm. Jack Cohn has succeeded in that environment very, very well. Everything else, no, it doesn't work. The line isn't good enough to make anything else work. The scripted, lame, weak, scared, predictable opening drives where we go backwards to start the game have to be scrapped. 
The tape is the tape. If it's Cone, you have to run what he does well at. Up-tempo, throw it around, spread it around at a faster pace. He does not succeed in regular lame plays Reese wants to run. He just doesn't. The line doesn't. Nothing flows. There's no rhythm. So if you're still going to go with Cone at all moving forward... Admit these realities and adjust your plan to fit what he's been doing well. Okay? If you're going with him, there's enough evidence. You can't sit there. We're going to do this long nine-minute drive and pound the ball and establish this and that. Notre Dame does not have that kind of team. They're not capable of doing that this year. Adjust. Earn your paycheck. Quit putting the team in a hole to start every game. The other thing, I don't know this week which it was, but I have a strong preference to put our strength on the field first. You run that offense out there, we go backwards, you're damn near kicking the punt from the end zone, and you flip field position to the negative two minutes into the game. I hate it. Hate it, okay? Get your best unit out there first. Get it three and out. Get into the game a little bit and soften things up. Getting the ball first and going backwards doesn't do anything for momentum except for the other team. So, if Cone's a part of this after the bye, fine, but only if you adjust what you're having him do. You have to. There is enough evidence. That what they what Reese wants it to look like with Cone is not physically possible. Stop doing it. It's coaching malpractice. This brings me to Pine. Does Brian Kelly hate him or what? I I I genuinely don't understand this dynamic. Did he only get as much snaps as he's been getting? Because Buckner wasn't fully healthy previously? Or what? I don't get, I genuinely don't get the dynamic with Pine. How he looked pretty decent at running and passing and now skip right over and it goes to Cone to Buckner. So it makes me think Buckner's the guy they all want, which wouldn't surprise me as the highest talent ceiling, I believe. And it makes me think Pine got the chances he did because Buckner wasn't healthy when they wanted or needed to go to somebody else besides Cone. Otherwise, I don't understand the dynamic and what's going on here. Tell me if you do and I missed it. But I don't get it. I don't see the... I don't see... I don't get it! I just don't get the logic of the Pine use and the not use. Unless they just don't think that much of them. That brings me to Buckner. You could see the talent. You could see the skill. You could see the flow of the offense. You could feel there's some juice out there with him. But he's a freshman with limited high school play due to injury, due to COVID. He's an ultra-talented guy without a lot of experience. There will be mistakes. That pick six sucks. I'm fine with it from a true freshman. I'm not fine with any of those mental mistakes from Jack Cohn. You were brought here for one reason, not to make those mistakes. If you're going to make them, I'd rather the freshmen make them. At least there's upside at the end of the road. Okay? At one point Saturday, we had seven freshmen playing on offense. Buckner, Alt, Colsey, Styles, Diggs, Evans, Barak. I am fine starting the developmental track on all these guys, and we've kind of had to due to injury. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with it. Note, I'm all about championships. Notre Dame's not winning one this year no matter what. Sooner I start that developmental track with younger guys that could be in a position to do so in two or three years, the better in my estimation. Okay? But it's odd. We have seen so much good and bad 
from all three quarterbacks. Good and bad from all of them. The big question is, what does this look like coming out of the bye? Depending on Buckner's health, if I had to pick, I would expect to see some kind of Cone-Buckner combo depending on the situation moving forward. I do not think Kelly is ready or willing to just commit to youth. I don't think he's there. I don't think Kelly is ready or willing to commit to the youth, build out the offense around Buckner over the bye, and start that youth movement. I don't think he's there. I don't think he thinks Buckner's there. For that reason, I expect a blend. Now, I'd be fine with where we're at, going all in on the future, developmental mode, but I don't think Brian Kelly will do it. And it's easy for me to say, as a fan, oh, I want development. I'm shooting for next year. Kelly wants to win all the games now. I get that. I get the difference between the fan and the coach angle there. Okay? But if Cone is still a factor, fine, because he's done a lot of big things in big moments. Fine. But if you're going to play Cone, you cannot run the offense you've been trying to run with him to start games. The first three drives with Cone average two yards per play. Failure. Absolute abject failure. It looked exactly how I expected it to look. Like garbage. Predictable, scared, soft garbage. It puts the team behind the eight ball right away. You're on a, in a hostile road environment and you handed them a 10 nothing lead right away due to bad offensive strategy. We all knew wouldn't work, but they insisted on doing it. So I need a package for Buckner that they could build out. And if you're still going to go with Cone for any of this, needs to be a totally new idea. Why? Listen, answer me this. Why can't you just start cone and run up tempo right away? Is there a rule against scoring a touchdown right away? Imagine going on the road and it's a hostile environment. And instead of running the ball into a wall and getting sacked, you're spreading it out, using half the play clock, throwing it quick, and you're moving down the field. Okay, if you're putting up points, no one's going to care if the drive's quicker because you're not running the ball or eating up all the clock. Cone has done well. When the tempo's quicker, he's getting the ball out. Do that. Don't overthink it. I know what Reese and Kelly want this to look like. It ain't possible. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. It's not possible for this to look the way they want it to look. So you got to adjust to win the rest of your games. What you're doing isn't working. I swear to God. If they have a half month to sit on this and figure it all out. And then they run the same garbage out against USC. I'm going to lose my mind. I can't handle it. If, if. I'm starting to sweat just thinking about it. If we get through these two weeks and they run Cone out there to start against USC and they run the exact same offense they just tried the last few weeks with Cone starting out, I'm done with Brian Kelly and Tommy Reese. I'm ready for the Freeman factor. I'm over it. That It's coaching malpractice. It's sabotaging your team. To keep doing stuff that is proven not to work is coaching malpractice. Okay? So take these two weeks and really put together a real plan on what you're going to do with quarterback the rest of the way. I need to see it. I need to see it. The offensive quarterback strategy and arrangement thus far has been nothing but chaos. Chaos leads to instability. 
instability leads to bad football. I'm sorry. Use the bye to create an actual plan. As for the rest of the offense, it's not, it's not good by any means, but the offensive line did take a little step forward Saturday night. I admit that. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's where I want it. It is not anywhere near where it should be if you claim O-line you. But I do think they actually took a step forward. 173 yards rushing is progress for us. Ended up averaging about five yards per carry final, the, the final three quarters at least. So once we got by that nightmare start, that was intentional by our coaching staff because everybody knew it wasn't going to work, and they did it anyways. After overcoming the sabotage by the offensive staff, they did average five yards a carry the final three quarters. That's progress in spite of the coaching. Good job. Here's the deal. Nathan Erbach, my recruiting guy, has been telling me Diggs is going to be a dude. There's just something different. Right away when you see him, there's something different. Diggs is going to be a dude, and I love it. Okay, so the line at least has something positive to build off of. 173 yards on the ground, gave up two sacks. Hey, beggars can't be choosers, but I honestly did feel the line was a little bit better this week. Use the buy to find that right combo. I right, listen experience, years, snaps, promises, all that could be damned. If you move people, you get to play the rest of the year, period, end of story. I'm sick of all the politics and the games and the promises. Move people, you get to play more. It's as fair as it could be. Buckner, 67 yards on the ground. He just opens everything up. It's so clear to see that when he's in there as that run threat, it spreads everything out. We need more of that with the offensive line struggles. Williams, 74 yards rushing, couple scores, five first downs he gained. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Left the game, concussion protocol, cleared, came back. Wide receivers, I like us playing the young guys. I like Williams catching five balls. I love Austin's night with the 46-yard the catch. The circus play on the two-pointer. Oh, by the way, that ball wasn't even meant to go to him. I'm sure everybody knows that. If you watch the replay, that's not even who it was being thrown to, and he went up and grabbed it. By the way, he also grabbed it while being totally interfered on, not called, because the ACC is a disgrace at officiating. Mayor injury hurt. That really hurt not having that target. Evans, Barong got action. I am sure the staff figured they would rather hold Mayor out if you find a way to get the win, then it's three weeks out because he he didn't play in this game, then you have the bye. So they want to get him back healthy. We ended up winning, so the strategy worked. So the offense is still very much a work in progress. But I feel like the offensive line, even being a little bit better, makes a big, big difference in the overall appearance and delivery of this offense. So I don't know what the plan's going to be coming out of the bye for the offense. I just know that the ones we've come up with to start games have failed. And that is not an opinion. That is a fact based on the results. It cost us one game already and almost two. If it's Cone, you got to change the plan. Ton of credit. For Cone getting pulled and coming back in and winning the game. That's ballsy. That's a really mentally tough thing to do. To get pulled because you're not good enough and then go in and win the game. Okay? Great job. There's just limitations. There's just limitations. However much a Buckner we see the second half of the season, wonderful. The more, the better. 
I'm all with ride and die for the future right now. Notre Dame's not winning a championship this year. That's my priority. This is Notre Dame. Winning the Camping World Bowl doesn't do nothing for me. So if it's more a Buckner, let's ride and die with the freshman. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. So it's easy for me to say let's let's develop and, and risk losing another game this year. I, it just seems like it's obvious that's the future, and I, I, I would be fine going more that way. As for Drew Pine, a lot of people on social media were saying right after the game he should enter the transfer portal. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the dynamic. I don't know the thinking and the decision-making with Pine. I just don't. Okay, so overall, Notre Dame is still relatively lost on offense, and I still refuse big picture to accept any reason for that 12 and a half years in, but I at least feel like there's some signs of what direction we need to go for future success, but you got to fix and work on this short term before we can really worry about what's coming next. I would bet money a Cone Buckner blend is coming your way the second half of the season. And again, I'm somewhat fine with it, but only if you adjust the entire plan whenever Cone's in. You have to do what he's been excelling at and nothing else because it's not going to work. And if I see it again, I'm done with Kelly. I'm done with Reese. I can't handle it. Kelly's right. Winning is hard. It's extra hard when you have to overcome a deficit the coaches put you in. I have no patience for that. Spotting a team 10-0. Spotting a team 17-0. You can't win that way. It's not a winning recipe. Stop putting us in that position. The more freshmen I see, the better. And I think we can win most of our games, if not all of them, if you go that route. There's enough talent. I love that seven freshmen played on offense. Let me see more of that. Let's go ahead now and flip this over to the defense. And I have a criticism and a compliment for the defense. Quite frankly, I felt the defense took a step back in this game. And they only gave up 22 points because remember the other points were from a pick six. So I didn't think they had a great night overall and they gave up 22. Okay. Gave up 11, 10 or more yard plays in the first half. That's absolutely brutal. Bad angles, bad tackling, unusually bad on allowing third down conversions. Keep in mind, they had a bad night by their standards and only gave up 22 points. On a bad night, I can live with that. The only reason it seems worse is because of our offense, that you feel like the defense has to be perfect or we're losing, okay? So we got a sack, seven tackles for loss, J.D. Bertrand, 10 tackles, Louis Foskey, White, Jason Adamiola, six each, huge interception by Bracey. He had some iffy plays as well. Not Cam Hart's best game. I also did want to mention Xavier Watts. Three tackles and one of them was a big one on a key play. Credit to that kid. Now, while we gave up way too many 10-plus plays, there were no plays of 20-plus, and we only gave up 22 total points on an off night. I can live with this. Giving up 8 of 17 third downs for first downs. Don't like it. We had five three and outs, which I love. But we also allowed two very long touchdown drives in a 46-yard drive in 24 seconds to allow them to put points on the board at the end of the half. Didn't like that at all. Didn't like that little drive at the end of the half. But you got the win. Regroup. Get healthier, tidy things up. My big picture concerns are not on the defensive side. They're just not at all, okay? 
I see the vision, and they play winning football every week. It's good enough to win. I may not love all of it, but it's been good enough to win with a competent, modern, middle-of-the-road offense that we apparently don't haven't had. Don't have. Don't have. So, defense, not a great night. But if you're down nights 22, I could live with it. Okay? Special teams, Dorr won the game. I'll take that. Okay? I will take that. He won the game. And we needed it. This was truly a... I don't care what the score is. Just find a way to win by one point so we can limp into the bye and figure some stuff out. This bye is so needed, you don't even know how needed this bye is. Not only just for health, but to be able to call time out on week-to-week -week game planning and figure out this offense. I am going to reiterate again, though. I swear to God. If they run Cone out to start against USC after a half a month and they run the same scheme and sets of plays they've been running with him to start games, I'm not exaggerating. I'm done with Kelly. I'm done with Reese. I'm over it. Everybody could see that isn't working. If you come out with it after a half a month and they don't notice it or try and change it, I'm done with you. I'm ready for something new. A new modern vision. Don't put me in that position after the bye. Don't. So, you end up getting to the bye with 11-1 still intact. We won on a day that Alabama lost. I enjoy that feeling. It's just a shame, though. Alabama, Oregon, Clemson, Ohio State are all not what we are used to them being. Being undefeated as Notre Dame would look very, very interesting right now. But no, we blew it. And the people eyeballing that spot are Cincinnati fans. It is what it is. It just sucks. This is an open field year in a lot of ways. And if we were reloading and not rebuilding through proper recruiting and development throughout every position group on the team, we would be in that spot, and we're not. I don't like it, but it's here we are. Okay? It's here we are. So, we're nowhere near where I wanted us to be on the reload end. And on offense, we're way below even my worst fears on the rebuild mode. It's very, very frustrating. Brian Kelly, after the game, about the quarterbacks and the offense... We're all still trying to figure it out. Well, the idea is to figure it out before you lose a game and ruin all of your big picture goals. You did not accomplish that. So now you have to not lose anymore and prep for the future because you're not winning a title this year, okay? You're not reloading. You got to reload from last year and we're not doing it. We can't do it, okay? So, get healthy in the bye. Calm your offensive chaos down. Build out an offense that you can rely on in the second half. Make your money, offensive staff. Do not have the balls to run out there what we've been seeing to start this USC game. I am going to lose my mind. It can't be that anymore. It already cost you a game and almost two. Don't do it again. So, in the bye, we're going to do a couple different things. We're going to have a call-in radio show again sometime this week. Also, I will probably be releasing my Bush Push documentary video that I recorded like a year ago and I've been sitting on. That'll probably drop. Uh, I'm not sure if that's better to come out this week or the actual week of the game. But I'll let you guys know. So let me know what you, what you guys think of what we saw. I mean, at least we won. But there's a lot to figure out. Good night.